Hey guys, you're watching Time to Football, and this is our mock draft for the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft. We're getting ready for the next big event that's coming up on the NFL schedule later this month. Hello everyone, my name is Hassan Khan, and thank you so much for watching Time to Football. I should say watching and listening to Time of Football because with this video, we're bringing podcasts back. You can go to iTunes or on the podcast app, search for Time of Football, and this podcast is available on that app. So you can listen to it uh, on the car ride to work, at the gym, whatever it may be. A longer version of this video is going to be available on the podcast app. Search for that. And it will be awesome. So what we're doing for you guys is we're going to give a mock draft of the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft. Not going to lie, when we were writing this up, it did take me two hours because I wanted to factor in every single possibility that could happen at the NFL Draft. I wanted to think, okay, if I was the general manager of this certain team, knowing what the team needs are... What do I do? Do I draft this player? Do I draft up? Do I trade down? What do I do in this kind of situation? So we took all of that into consideration, and we do have a couple of trades that we think are going to happen. So without further ado, let's go ahead and start with our mock draft for the first round of the 2018 NFL Draft. First up, number one, the Cleveland Browns are going to draft quarterback Sam Donald out of USC. Look. There's a 10% chance that the Browns don't draft Sam Darnold. At this rate, you've got to take Darnold. There's no other option. Yes, Tyrod Taylor is the quarterback, but he's not the quarterback of the future. Darnold can sit his first year, let Taylor start, and learn behind him. At number two, we've got the Giants taking Saquon Barkley, running back out of Penn State. The New York Giants phones on draft night is going to be ringing. There's going to be potential trade offers from maybe the Buffalo Bills, the New England Patriots to move up to that number two spot. However, to get a spot that prestigious at number two, you're going to have to trade a lot and it's not going to be enough for the New York Giants. I am aware that the Giants may lean towards getting a quarterback, but when you have a chance at number two to draft one of the best running back prospects and Saquon Barkley, probably since Adrian Peterson, you can't pass up on that opportunity. The Giants have been lacking in a run game for so long. This is their chance not to screw it up. At number three, the New York Jets will draft Josh Rosen, quarterback out of UCLA. So the Jets traded up from the number six spot to the number three spot. That kind of made it apparent that they're going to get a quarterback. Rosen is the next available or the best available quarterback right after Sam Darnold. So they're going to make him the quarterback of the future. And Rosen is a guy that can go in there and start all 16 games in Gotham City. At number four, the Browns' second first round pick, Bradley Chubb, defensive end out of NC State. So imagine pairing this guy with Miles Garrett. That is going to be a force to be reckoned with in the next year or two. At number five, originally held by the Denver Broncos, but we do predict a trade. And the Buffalo Bills are going to move up to draft quarterback Josh Allen out of Wyoming. I am aware that Buffalo did sign A.J. McCarron in this offseason, but he is still an unknown. McCarron hasn't played enough games to prove himself as an elite quarterback. With a quarterback class like this, Josh Allen with probably the strongest arm in this draft, you can't pass up on that opportunity if you're Buffalo. For the Indianapolis Colts at number six, I have them drafting Quentin Nelson, offensive guard out of Notre Dame. People are touting Nelson to be one of the best offensive line prospects since they can even remember. They're already predicting that he's going to be in the Hall of Fame. So imagine if Andrew Luck does get healthy or whichever quarterback is behind that line, they're going to have a productive season because of Quentin Nelson. At number seven, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Minka Fitzpatrick, defensive back out of Alabama. So Fitzpatrick is the best defensive back available in this draft, and the Buccaneers need a lot of secondary help. They're going to draft Fitzpatrick. At number eight, the Bears also take a defensive back 
Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State. Ward has the potential of being a lockdown corner in this league. Again, just like the Buccaneers, the Bears, they do have a decent defense as, as far as the run defense goes, but their pass defense is lacking. Ward can help them out a lot. At number nine, I've got the San Francisco 49ers taking Roquan Smith, linebacker out of the University of Georgia. So 49ers could use another pass rusher to pair him up with Solomon Thomas that they got last year. So draft Roquan Smith, it's going to help you out a lot. At number 10, they didn't get Roquan Smith, so they're going to get the best available linebacker, and that's Tremaine Edmonds out of Virginia Tech. The Raiders need a lot of help defensively, and they're going to start with their front seven in the linebacking core, and Tremaine Edmonds is the best available linebacker after Roquan Smith. At number 11, the Miami Dolphins, I have them drafting Vita Vea, defensive tackle out of Washington. So a lot of people are saying that Adam Gase wants to draft a quarterback. Baker Mayfield is one of those guys that has come up as potential draft picks, but Adam Gase has said earlier in March that he trusts Ryan Tannehill, that Ryan Tannehill is looking good coming off his injury. Why draft a quarterback at number 11 when you can find a replacement for Nadam Kong Su, who left in free agency to go to the uh, Los Angeles Rams? At number 12, so like we said, this was originally held by the Buffalo Bills, but the Denver Broncos are going to take the spot, and they're going to draft offensive tackle Mike McGlinchey out of Notre Dame. Why draft a quarterback when you already got Case Keenum for the next couple of years, sign him to a two-year contract, John Elway loves Keenum, they're going to build around him, and the offensive line is the way to start. At number 13, the Washington Redskins draft Derwin James, safety out of Florida State. They would love to get someone like Vita Vea if they drop down to him, but we predict that the Dolphins are going to get him, so the Redskins draft the next available player, and they also need some secondary help, and they get Derwin James. At number 14, the Green Bay Packers hold the spot, but we predict a blockbuster trade with the New England Patriots, and the Patriots move up to draft Baker Mayfield quarterback out of Oklahoma. Now, there's a lot of reasoning behind this. Number one, the Green Bay Packers are one of those teams that are willing to trade down, and it wouldn't hurt them, such, such as the Denver Broncos, because you think about it, the Packers, if Aaron Rodgers hadn't gotten hurt, they would have made the playoffs, and they're one of those teams that don't have too many holes to fill, and they get two first-round picks, so it's a win-win situation for them. For the New England Patriots, they have two first-round picks to offer with that trade with Brandon Cooks. They need a quarterback for the future. Belichick loves Mayfield. They're going to draft him at number 14. Number 15, the Arizona Cardinals draft Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. So last year, we predicted that the Cardinals would draft Deshaun Watson. The Texans traded up past them and ruined their hopes. The Cardinals, obviously, they regret that decision. They should have offered something to trade up. Didn't get Deshaun Watson. They don't want that opportunity to pass up. They want Mayfield, but the Patriots are going to trade over them. So the next available quarterback is Lamar Jackson. The Cardinals are going to draft him. Possible to sit behind Sam Bradford until he gets hurt. Not if, but when. So Lamar Jackson can come in and play good football. At number 16, the Baltimore Ravens select Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama. The best wide receiver in this draft. The Ravens do need some help at the receiving core after letting go Jeremy Macklin and Mike Wallace to free agency. 17, we've got the Los Angeles Chargers selecting Deron Payne, defensive tackle out of Alabama. The main reason for this, the Chargers need some help with the rush defense. They were second to last when it came to the rush defense last year in the NFL. Deron Payne is going to help them out mightily. At 18, the Seahawks select Isaiah Wynn, offensive guard out of Georgia. So the Seahawks could draft a defensive back, could draft uh, maybe a defensive lineman after letting go of Michael Bennett. But Russell Wilson, last year, he was pretty much that whole entire team. They almost made the playoffs when really you think about it, the way that their season went, if it weren't for Russell Wilson, this team would have had a worse record last year. They need some help for Russell Wilson. He was running for his life. If they solidify that offensive line, they'll be a solid team on offense, and then they can draft... Uh, someone on the secondary, someone on the defensive line, and maybe even a running back later on in the second round. 
At number 19, the Dallas Cowboys select Maurice Hurst, defensive tackle out of Michigan. Just like the Chargers, the Cowboys need some help on the defensive line. Demarcus Lawrence is the only good guy that they got. Getting someone like Hurst is going to help them out a lot. At number 20, the Lions select Harold Landry, outside linebacker, out of Boston College. So here's the thing. A lot of people are saying that the Lions could select a running back in the first round. That would also be a smart move. But when you have a defensive-minded coach like Matt Patricia, selecting someone like Harold Landry, who could play at the outside linebacker position, could play at the defensive end position, could be used as an edge rusher, he could be used in multiple positions. Harold Landry is someone that Matt Patricia is going to love to play around with. The Lions are going to select him. At 21, the Bengals select offensive guard Will Hernandez out of Texas El Paso. Pretty much at this point, Dalton just needs an offensive line to be solidified and protected. Will Hernandez is the best offensive guard after Quentin Nelson and Isaiah Wynn. Those guys get pulled from the draft earlier, so Will Hernandez is their guy in Cincinnati. 22 is a position that was originally held by the Buffalo Bills, but they trade both of their first-round picks to the Denver Broncos. And at 22, the Broncos select Darius Geis, running back out of LSU. When you had Devontae Booker or Jamal Charles, both of them sort of failed to live up to expectations. Geis can be the guy that can come in, compete with Devontae Booker. 23 was originally held by the New England Patriots, but like we mentioned before, the Packers get this draft pick and they select Josh Jackson, cornerback out of Iowa. So this is pretty much a steal for the Packers. Imagine this. The Packers have two first round picks. They need to get secondary help. They were originally going to draft uh, Josh Jackson at number 14 because after Denzel Ward, he's the best defensive back available. But if they trade down to 23 and still get Josh Jackson, they are winning this NFL draft. Number 24, the Panthers select Mike Hughes, cornerback out of Central Florida. You could say that the Panthers could use some receiver help. When they use Christian McCaffrey in the slot or they use him as a receiving running back on third downs, they could really go ahead and pass up on a receiver in the first round and get someone in the second round. They do need some secondary help, and that's where Mike Hughes comes in. After everything with Brashad Breland fell through with him failing his physical and not being able to be signed, Mike Hughes can be a fill-in for Breland. At 25, the Titans select Marcus Davenport, defensive end out of Texas San Antonio. Pretty much at this point, it's the Titans grabbing the next best available player, and Davenport is one of those guys that can get drafted in the middle of the first round. He drops down, Titans select him. Number 26, we've got the Falcons selecting Taven Bryan, defensive tackle, out of Florida. This is pretty much a no-brainer at this point because Taven Bryan is the best defensive tackle on the draft board that is left for the Falcons to draft. With Adrian Claiborne and Don Terry Poe leaving in free agency, this will be a good fill-in for that defensive line. Number 27, the Saints select Leighton Vander Esch, linebacker out of Boise State. They need some help in that interior. They need some help... Uh, with the front seven, and Vander Esch is going to be the guy that they go to because he's the best linebacker available this late in the draft. Number 28, the Steelers select Rashawn Evans, linebacker out of Alabama. So think of it as if the Saints don't get Vander Esch, then the Steelers are going to get him. But Rashawn Evans is going to be the next linebacker that is available, the best one that is available after Vander Esch. And with the injury to Ryan Shazier, we don't know the future on his NFL career. Steelers have to go ahead and fill in that position and get Rashawn Evans. At 29, the Jaguars are going to stretch for this one, and they're going to draft Mason Rudolph, quarterback out of Oklahoma State. So the Jaguars need a lot of help at receiver because they let Allen Robertson and Allen Hearns go. They need some help at linebacker because Paul Puzlesny retired from the NFL. But the Jaguars can make up for those in the second and third rounds. For now, they can draft a quarterback for the future because Blake Bortles, at this point, he's an unknown. They don't know if they're going to keep him around. Mason Rudolph, go ahead and predict for the future or go ahead and plan for the future. Uh, even though it is a stretch, if you go into the second round, he may not be available late in the second round. Jaguars get him for a quarterback for the future. At 30, the Minnesota Vikings 
select Colton Miller offensive tackle out of UCLA. So at this point, the Vikings don't have a lot of holes to fill. They filled their holes in free agency. They got their quarterback in Kirk Cousins. Now they need to build around him. They need to protect him. And Colton Miller can be that guy. At 31, the Patriots originally held this pick, but they traded away to the Green Bay Packers, and the Packers select wide receiver Cortland Sutton out of SMU. So think of this scenario. The Packers already have two first-round picks. They got their secondary help. They could use some receiver help after letting go of Jordy Nelson and Jeff Janis in the offseason. Now they get a big receiver, a 6'4 receiver that they can line up on the outside that can be a red zone target that can beat the secondary, use his size to his advantage. They already have a speedy receiver in Randall Cobb. They have shifty receivers in uh, Devontae Adams as well. Imagine having a big wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers to throw to. That could be Cortland Sutton for the Green Bay Packers. And at 32, the Super Bowl champion Philadelphia Eagles select Jair Alexander, cornerback, out of Louisville. So I was also thinking that maybe the Eagles draft another tight end because they let go of Trey Burton in the offseason. He signed with Chicago. I think that the Eagles need more secondary help because you can never get enough secondary help in that kind of position. So after letting go of Patrick Robinson to New Orleans, they could have a solid replacement and Jair Alexander to be their slot cornerback. So say if this mock draft that I just made right here ends up being true, I say that the winners of the first round, it's going to be the Green Bay Packers because you can think about it. They're a playoff team if Aaron Rodgers didn't get hurt last year. Not only that, they have the number 14 pick. Josh Jackson is the guy that they want at number 14. They trade out of it. They get two picks later in the draft. At number 23, Josh Jackson falls in their hands, so they get their secondary help in the first round. And at 31, they get their wide receiver help, a big wide receiver that can line up on the outside for Aaron Rodgers to throw to. That is a win-win scenario for the Green Bay Packers. But let me know what you guys think. Definitely leave a comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube. But if you're listening to the podcast, um, you can go to youtube.com slash time to football. You can leave a comment down below on this video. Or you can even hit us up on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All the direct links to those social media sites is included in the description of this video on YouTube. But on all social media sites, the username Time to Football. Just search for Time to Football. You'll find us. Thank you guys so much for uh, watching this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. Subscribe to this channel. And I'll talk to you guys later. I'm